What is up my favorite Unreal devs? Pharaoh back here with another tutorial. Uh, I think this is going to be the last part of this little three-part mini-series that we've got going on with, uh, with the first-person shooter gun mechanics. If you don't remember or you haven't watched those videos, this is what we've got so far. Using a combination of UENUMs and overlap events, what we've been able to do is walk up to a weapon, fire the weapon, walk up to another one, and get that weapon instead. And then we can keep walking over and collecting different weapons. But as of yet, we don't have the ability to uh, switch back and forth between the weapons that we've already that we've already uh, picked up. Once we pick up once we pick up one of them, we lose it. And today, that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna fix. And the way that we're gonna fix that is by using a struct. Uh, now, a struct is just it's a user defined uh, data type that we create inside of C++, and using that, we'll be able to uh, toggle between the active weapons that we have. It might not make sense here, uh, but if you already know what a struct is, then you probably have an idea of where I'm going to go with this. Um, but let's get to it. All right, back in uh, the tutorial character uh, header file. Right underneath our uenum, what we're going to do is we're going to create a uStruct you know what? I'm going to make this enum a blueprint type, which basically just means that we can use this enum in blueprints. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing uh, for the uStruct here. Just so that in the future, if we'd like to use, use this in blueprints, we've already got this functionality built in, and it doesn't really hurt our compile times too much or anything like that. So we can go ahead and do that, no problem. All right, and this is going to be a struct, and like with uh, all structs, it we're going to use the prefix f just to let it know, uh, just to let the the Unreal header tool know that what we have right here is a struct. So, and I'm just going to call it equipped weapons, and then this is just going to hold all of the weapons that we have. Uh, as of right now, I only have uh, a rifle and a pistol, um, but you can go ahead and add in whatever weapons you have in uh, into this struct. So I've got class, what's it called, a weapon, is that what we called it? And I'm going to call this one rifle, and I'm going to set it equal to null putter because it's not going to have a value initially, right? Because our active weapon, when we start off our game, is going to be none. So what that means is that the, the rifle that we have will be inactive. We won't actually have one. And then I'll do the same for A, another weapon, and that was called pistol, and that is also going to be null putter. Now, if you're going to be starting off with a, uh, if you're going to be starting off with a weapon, then you'll want to uh, maybe spawn the weapon. Oh, I didn't set this to be a pointer. Here we go. Um, but yeah, if you if you already have uh, a weapon to start off with, you'd want to set it to uh, to that. But since we have uh, nothing, basically, we're going to set it equal to null putter. Now, we can also um, do some other things with u structs. We we can store more things than just uh, pointers to classes, uh, because blueprints and pointers don't actually work out well together. If we wanted to, we could actually hold in a variable that says int thirty two num weapons, and I don't know, maybe set that to zero to start off with. And what we'll do is just like with any other thing that we want to uh, allow blueprints to access. I'm just going to set this to edit anywhere just so that when we go ahead and actually compile this, I want this to show up in the blueprints. 
Now, I don't think we can do that with the um, with these guys right here, but we can do that with uh, regular variables and, and regular data types, as long as they're not pointers to other stuff. All right, so we got that. And let's see if we can go ahead and compile this. Like always, you want to compile anytime you, you do anything um, that messes up this, this U class right here, just because you never know what the, what the engine is doing under the hood. Oh, and I've got a failed compile. Oh, and that is because we forgot uh, to put in the macro that actually needs to start off the struct with. And the macro that we need, uh, you'll see uh, in older tutorials or guides uh, when using structs in Unreal, you'll see that you need a generated uStruct body macro. But uh, I believe it was since a, about, I don't know, version 4.12, you actually don't need the uStruct in there. You could just go ahead with and use a generated body. And then this is just going to help the Unreal header tool uh, parse everything out for us. All right, now that we've got that in, we've got that under wraps. Let's go ahead and compile again. Hopefully, we have a successful compile. Come on, you can do it. There we go. We've got a successful compile. All right, now let's keep going. Uh, some other things that we're going to do, we're going to create a function that we're going to use to then uh, switch weapons with because it's hard to switch weapons if you don't have any functionality for that. So it's just going to return void, and I'm going to call it switch weapon. It's not going to take any parameters. Here we go. And I'm going to create an instance of this uh, f-equipped weapon struct so f equipped weapon is it weapons or weapon weapons there we go and i'm going to call it equipped weapons now we could actually create a, a default constructor in which we uh, set all of these values but i'm not going to do that right here just because uh, hopefully you know what a struct is by this point so we've got that going on, we've got that going on. Now we can go ahead and get rid of this. We're not gonna need this anymore. And then, all right, we can start on the tutorial source file, or the character source file. Uh, to start off, I'm gonna, before I forget, I'm gonna create the button input that we're going to use to then switch our weapon. So switch, I'm just gonna call it switch and then it's going to be calling the switch weapon function. Super easy. All right, now we have to modify our on pickup function. Because what we need to do is we need to be able to set uh, our, excuse me, we have to be able to set our new values for our pointers that we set up in inside of our equipped weapon struct. All right, it's gonna be really super simple and easy. I'm gonna go ahead and at the top of the if. So this is gonna be if the actor is a rifle, then what we're going to do is we're going to check if we already have a rifle. If we, if we don't, then we'll go ahead and pick up and equip a new rifle. But if we do already have one, then what we'll do is, um, in most games, like if you pick up uh, a weapon that you already have in you know, a typical first person shooter, what'll generally happen is you'll just uh, get an ammo refill. So that's what we can do here as well. Um, I don't actually have any ammo functionality, but we'll, we'll just do, uh, what is that called? A debug print, just so that we can add that functionality in later if we want to. So to go ahead and do this, I'm going to say if not equipped weapons dot rifle, then what we're going to do is we're going to say equipped 
weapons dot rifle is equal to other actor but it's not going to like this because other actor is of type a actor and our rifle is of type a weapon so I'm going to go ahead and just really quick cast to a weapon boom there we go easy money and then we're going to say else uh, ue underscore log like always we do this pretty much every tutorial right log temp warning and then text macro and we're gonna say reloaded rifle all right and then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this over to our pistol so if we don't have a pistol equipped then we are going to equip one and we're gonna cast to a another weapon we're gonna say reloaded pistol not pistol pistol now that's done that's really that's gonna be it basically for that so now when we go ahead and pick up our weapon the pointer that we have is going to be set to whatever we picked up and it's going to be obviously based on what type of pickup we use so we don't pick up a rifle and equip a pistol because that doesn't make sense all right so we've done our switch weapon oh, we have not created our switch weapon function so we'll go ahead and do that next this is this one's going to be really easy really simple so we're going to say void a tutorial character and this is going to be switch weapon no parameters and basically we're just going to test if we have a rifle and we have a pistol equipped then we'll switch to the pistol and if we if our weapon currently is a pistol and we have a rifle then we'll switch to the rifle because we don't want to be able to uh, switch to a rifle if we haven't picked up a rifle and the way that this is written um, it's not the most elegant uh, way of doing it but it's very much like the on pickup function where you can go ahead and add in another else if and have as many uh, as many different weapons as you want so you could have like if you were to come back into here we could have a pistol, we could have a rifle, we could have a shotgun, we have a rocket launcher. We could have all, all sorts of stuff, right? So, I'm going to come back down here and we're going to say if active weapon is equal to, not plus plus, is equal to E active weapon rifle and equipped weapons dot pistol is valid then what will be then what we will do is we will set our active weapon equal to e active weapon pistol whoa whoa what's going on with my uh rifle here rifle pistol okay intellisense is just being pretty slow there we go we got everything working again and i'm going to copy all of this and i'm going to say else if e active weapon and basically we're just inverting all of these uh values right here so if it says pistol then we're switching it to rifle if it says rifle then we're switching it to pistol all right so that's done so if our active weapon is a rifle and we have a pistol then we will switch to our pistol but if that is not true and we have uh, a pistol and we have a rifle then we're going to switch to the rifle pretty easy stuff nothing uh too mind bending 
And last but not least, we are going to set up different fire states uh, for our pistol and our rifle just to make sure that uh, we, we have a good idea of what's going on. At the moment, we, ha we basically just have if our active weapon, if we have an active weapon, right? Um, and we'll fire regardless of, of the weapon type that we have. Um, but here, we're going to set up uh, a little bit something different. So it's going to be, you can have different ways of firing the gun um, depending on what gun it is. So if our gun is a rifle, then we'll go ahead and do all of this. And we're also going to, actually I'm gonna put it right here just so it's much easier. So UE log, once you get nested like three or four ifs deep, things are really, uh, it, it gets really easy to lose stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put our debug message right here. And we're just gonna say, rifle fired something like that something easy uh, that we can understand that our rifle fired and what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this in here and I'm gonna say else if and what does that say active weapon and I'm going to switch this to pistol. Oh, I just got rid of everything that I copied there. I don't know why I keep wanting to type in pistol. Pistol, here we go. Let's go ahead and copy all of that. What I should do is I should actually... I'm going to get rid of all this. Is I'm going to create a different function uh, that's just going to handle strictly firing logic. Uh, just to make sure that this stays nice and clean because so far it's getting really nasty. Uh, void fire gun. And I'm going to make that function down here. Fire gun. There we go. And copy everything in there. Oh, everything here. See, this is the, the problem that I was having is that it's just really, really easy to lose what you're actually trying to do uh, if you have a bunch of nested if statements and stuff like that. So here, yep, there we go. Copied everything correctly. I'm going to get rid of this and move it back into the if statement here. So if active weapon is equal to e active weapon rifle, then we're going to say rifle fired, but before that we're going to say fire gun. And then once again we're going to go else if else if we fire a pistol there we're going to fire gun. Now you're probably going to want different different functions per weapon just just by the way that weapons work. Some of them are spread shot, some of them are automatic, some of them are semi-automatic. It's all up to you and I'm going to say pistol fired. That should work a lot better. All right, so we did our switch weapon button, our on pickup, our switch weapon on fire. There we go. I'm going to compile and while it's compiling, I'm going to come into the project settings. Input, action mappings, make sure, yep, I already have one called switch and it's set to the right mouse button. So when I click the, the right mouse button, what I should be able to get is um, we should be able to switch our weapons. I'm actually going to change this up a little bit so that I'm going to go switch. Okay. 
and then I'm gonna add an else so if we don't have any weapons equipped yet I'm going to print out can't do that no weapons to switch to so just adding another layer of uh, debugging just so that we can know exactly what's happening with our code. If we don't have any weapons to switch to, then it's not gonna switch to them. Uh, and, but if we do have one to switch to, then we'll go ahead and do that. And we have printing uh, for, for debugging and that should help us out a lot. Right here, what I have is it's more of a toggle so if you've got a, a two weapon uh, system like, like you would find in, I don't know, Call of Duty or Battlefield where you'll have your primary and your secondary. But this method also works uh, just as well for uh, games similar to Doom where you've got all of the weapons that you can switch to. You can switch to like seven or eight different weapons. Um, it's just the way that I set up the input, it, it acts more like a toggle. All right, so I'm going to hit play and I'm going to right click. Can't do that. No weapons to switch to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and rifle fired. That's all good. I'm going to try right clicking again and it still tells me can't do that. No weapons to switch to. I'm going to walk up to the new gun and now this should be the pistol. So pistol fired. And when I go ahead and right click to switch weapons, rifle fired. So this is basically, oh, and you can see that we had the, we had, we already had a pistol equipped. Um, I can't believe I forgot to demonstrate that. I accidentally did though. We already had a pistol equipped. And when I walked over the, the second pistol, it reloaded our pistol for us. So we can easily um, extrapolate this and get much deeper in, and actually implement uh, uh, an ammo system and, and different stuff like that, which I believe I possibly could have done in an earlier tutorial. I can't remember at this point. But that's going to be it for today, and that's probably going to be it for the rest of this little mini-series that we had going on here. It was fun while it lasted, but, but I think it's time to move on to something new. In the meantime, let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section down below. If you'd like to see anything in particular, uh, maybe a weapon cooldown system, or I don't know what you want. So let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. You'll get new videos every Monday in this series and every Wednesday, I'm sorry, Friday for the intro to C++ uh, video. I don't know why I would have mentioned that because you guys should probably have the intros all down. But that is going to be it for me today. Thank you all, and I'll see you in the next one.